we have been discussing uh, protection of animals during transport and um, how what are the welfare consequences when animals are tra transported and how can it be measured if uh, there are any welfare consequences. And uh, this is part of uh, some huge mandates that have been uh, given from uh, the European Commission who uh, are about in the form a farm to fork a mandate trying to uh, look, uh, they're going to revise the animal welfare legislation. So uh, that's very important for them and it's a huge task for, for us to us. And, and today we had uh, and yesterday we had a lot of focus on transport. Some of the main points uh, is it's not so simple to just put on up restrictions and say you cannot uh, transport an animal for more than uh, this period of, of time or uh, for uh, this amount of kilometers because it really depends on what are the conditions under which the animal is stranded. Uh, what is, uh, how hot is it? How cold is it? Uh, what is the uh, humidity? How many animals are transported? Uh, how, what is the space allowance that these animals have? And uh, when you put all these things together, uh, it becomes quite complex. And there's so much uh, research uh, from observation studies where we can actually observe all these things uh, all together. So that's uh, more or less what all the discussions have been um, focusing around. Uh, on top of that, we also had a brief discussion about uh, in uh, 2016, uh, the European Parliament uh, um, adopted a, a, the animal health law and this has come into force in 2021 and there are still some disease control measures that needs to be um, uh, assessed and we have assessed those for some of the so-called uh, category A diseases, so the most serious diseases that we have that could be foot and mouth disease, uh, avian influenza and, and so forth. So uh, these are the two key points that we have been addressing in this uh, plenary.